everybody. Welcome back to the Scott Wingeter Show. So yesterday, uh, it was April 8th, Donald Trump, the Trump campaign released a uh, message to the American people. Specifically, uh, it was all about Donald Trump's position on abortion, which he had not uh, really clarified up until that point. And so he's come out yesterday and he's made a, a statement about uh, both IVF in veto fertilization and uh, abortion, and he's taken a stance on that. So we're going to do a quick reaction video today uh, where I watch the president's statement, and then I will give some commentary about that. Let's take a look. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, and healthy American families. Mm. We want to make it easier for mothers and families to have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America, like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. A precious baby. All right. So babies are precious. All right. So... It's very clever, I think, what he's doing here. He's he's going to make a national mandate for IVF. So blanket across the board, all 50 states, Washington, D.C. included, uh, we're going to make sure that women have access to health care through IVF. All right. So if you were having trouble uh, getting pregnant naturally and you want to have children, uh, we're going to make sure that this is the Republican Party's stance now that we're going to have IVF um, available for women to pursue in order so that we can start having the nuclear family, which Republicans support. We're going to make sure that the precious babies uh, will have uh, people will have an uh, ability to have precious babies. All right. So this is a national mandate. This is a blanket statement across all 50 states could be more beautiful or better than that. Today, I'm pleased that the Alabama legislature has acted very quickly and passed legislation that preserves the availability of IVF in Alabama. They really did a great and fast job. The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life and the side of mothers, father, their beautiful babies, and that's what we are. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican Party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy in life. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion Here and abortion go. rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is, the baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. So that's a very strong stance to take against infanticide. So he's right. The baby is, it's called a partial birth abortion. So the baby's basically born. They do it kind of in an unnatural way. They, they twist the baby around so that they pull them, pull the kid out feet first. And then they insert something into the baby's, the back of the baby's skull and kill the baby it's a completely viable child. Obviously, the woman's giving birth, right? So he's taking a very strong stance against that, and I, I agree 100% with that stance. I think anybody that's willing to do that is a monster and uh, really should be in prison for murder. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. 
At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. Okay, so this is where he's going to get himself maybe into a little bit of hot water with Republicans, right? He's saying, do what's right for your family. Do what's right by your conscience. Do what's right for you. Follow your heart. Follow your feelings. And I got to tell you, that just doesn't sit well with me personally. Um, I think that that goes completely against what the framers of the constitution, the founding fathers, that they would not have taken a, any position like that where we're following our heart. We're following our emotions. We're, you know, doing what feels right. Mm -hmm. No, they were men of the enlightenment. They didn't really embrace emotions. What they really thought people should do is they should follow reasoning. Okay. He's using the word right a lot. Um, and this goes right back to, uh, I think the heart of the issue with, uh, in regards to the conflict of what an abortion is, when we talk about, uh, if, if somebody from the left, let's say talks about it, they're going to say, oh, it's a woman's right. Well, let's talk about the definition of rights. I cannot harp on this enough. All right. If you look up the word rights in the dictionary, Okay. The definition is that which is morally correct and just. And so therefore I can't say that it is ever right for a woman to choose to have her child killed inside the womb, period, full stop. On top of that, when we go back and we look at something like the Declaration of Independence, our, our founding document, which really puts forth this whole idea of uh, natural rights theory, natural law, adherence to natural law, the purposes of government and everything, it, it says... We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Now, the purpose of government is to secure the rights of the people. And especially this has been codified in the Constitution under the 14th Amendment, where now it is the states and the local governments as well are basically charged with the same mission as the federal government. So in other words, any type of legitimate government, whether you're talking about local government or you're talking about state governments or even the federal government, there's an argument to be made here that they have not just a right, but rather a duty and obligation as the government to protect the rights of people. And so the question now becomes, well, who is a person who has rights? The question that's and I think that's a valid question. And so let's look at it like this. Uh, I think the best case that I can make and maybe I'm showing my age here. Uh, this this is maybe a 20 year old case, but this was a very famous uh, I infamous event that happened about 20 years ago out in California. There was a woman named Lacey Peterson that was killed by her husband, Scott Peterson. He killed her and he dumped her body into the bay in San Francisco. Um, Scott Peterson was charged with and found guilty of and convicted of double homicide uh, because Lacey was pregnant at the time that he, she was murdered by Scott Peterson. So he was convicted of double homicide. And so when we look at that, okay, that's a great example of the state of California making sure that they are actually doing their duty here in convicting Scott Peterson of double homicide. Now, the crazy thing is here is back then and even today under California's law in regards to abortion, if Lacey Peterson had wanted to go out and have an abortion and kill that child, then she could have done so. And so now you have the question of is 
it really wise and prudent? Is it logical for our legal system to basically have this double standard? In essence, what, what our system of law is saying here in this particular case is that whether or not that child has a life and is endowed by our, our creator with that right, that fundamental right to life, is contingent upon whether or not his mother intends on keeping the child. And so in this case, Lacey intended on keeping the child and Scott Peterson murdered her and the child. And so he was slapped with double homicide. But if she wanted to, she could have gone out and had an abortion and everybody would have been just fine with that. Does that, whether you agree with abortion or not, does that make any logical sense at all to you? You see how there's this complete disconnect? There's a, there's a complete contradiction in the law here. And the law really ought to be succinct and even. And we, we believe in equal justice under the law. So I'm not seeing that here. I think there's an argument to be made that abortion should be, you know, outlawed uh, in most cases across the board. Because really what you're doing is you're killing another human being. And the science very clearly backs that up. And if you disagree, please comment because uh, I'll, I'd be happy to debate you on this issue. Uh, let's continue. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now. And that's what we want, the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, mm -hmm. Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people, for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state it was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. You must follow your heart of this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly a nation in decline. And I think that's really at the heart of this issue here, right? Okay, so I've already articulated the principled view, right? The ideological view on this topic, right? As a Republican, I am just not for abortion, period. End of story, full stop, right? So there are certain cases where the mother's life is legitimately in jeopardy. You know, if if the egg gets trapped, for example, in the fallopian tubes and doesn't actually settle into the actual womb, uh, if that child keeps growing, it's going to burst the fallopian tubes and the woman's going to die. And then the child, of course, is not viable uh, at that point and it will die as well. And so, yeah, that makes sense, all right? You got to get that egg out of that fallopian tube or the woman and the child are both going to die that no problem but what what i'm against is abortion just because of convenience or just i mean on principle we we don't really have to go into this i think it's really interesting when you go back and you look at what the purpose of the republican party was in its founding in the 1850s was really to go against slavery right um and I think Donald Trump's position here, interestingly enough, is actually more, if you want to make the analogy, and I've made this analogy in the past, uh, what we used to call slavery, if you look it up in historical, in a historical context, we call slavery the um, peculiar institution. And why? What is it? What makes it a peculiar institution? Because you have at the very top um, of law, this the, the highest uh, if you want to think of laws like a totem pole right at the very top of the of the law totem pole is natural law right um and then at the very bottom of the totem pole is positive law and you know positive law is a lot like what we think of when we talk about anybody making a law so like the speed limit on the road outside your home is put there by positive law a lawmaking body said all right it's going to be 25 miles an hour on this road it's going to be 55 miles an hour on this road that's all established by positive law so that's the majority of the laws that we talk about that's what we're talking about is positive law and what makes um slavery in this case the peculiar institution is because it is a an, 
an example of where positive law, you know, we're going to say it's okay and lawful to own other human beings very much goes against our concepts of natural law. Remember, we believe that everybody's endowed with the right to liberty. Okay. And if you're a slave, you don't have liberty. Why? Because this positive law down here has trumped the natural law, the the universal law that applies to all human beings, regardless of time, place, ethnicity, race, whatever little box you want to chop people up into, right? I think abortion is really the 20th century and the 21st century's version of the peculiar institution. And what's fascinating here with this analysis is that Trump is really taking the popular sovereignty approach to the new peculiar institution of abortion here. And that was the democratic uh, position on slavery back in the day. Remember Lincoln versus Douglas running for the Illinois Senate back in the 1856, where, uh, you know, Lincoln's like, no, I don't think slavery should expand. Douglas's position was uh, based upon him getting the compromise of 1853 was that we're going to let states decide by popular vote whether or not they're going to be a slave state or whether or not they're going to be a free state. This is what Donald Trump is doing here with abortion. And I'm just not sure that that is the principled... Um, perspective that that we should be taking here now let's shift the conversation and go to pragmatism here okay trump has been looking at all these states like ohio like kansas these red states which should be codifying in their state constitutions an abolition of abortion right but instead, what they're doing is they're getting it across in wide margins. They're codifying a right to have an abortion. And so he recognizes that he's getting, you know, the Republicans are getting their butts kicked at the polls in these states over this issue. And so he's taking that safe approach. And I understand pragmatically why you'd want to do that because, you know, he needs to get elected, right? Um, politics is the art of pursuing what is possible, not necessarily what is, uh, ideologically right all the time, right? You have, to, you have to understand that even if you're a person like me that wants to have abortion outlawed in all 50 states, right? I, if I'm running for office on that platform right now, I risk not ever getting into office to do anything about it. And so it is a difficult thing for a lot of conservatives, especially hardcore Christian uh, conservatives, to, to understand that, that position. I get where he's coming from. Ideologically, I, I'm against it. Pragmatically, I see what he's doing. Uh, so... You know, you're going to have to make up your own mind on that. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think Trump is selling out? Do you think, uh, you know, if you're a Republican, do you, are, are you saddened to hear that he's taking this sort of popular sovereignty approach to uh, abortion? Or do you think that that, you know, that makes sense? Are you in favor of him doing that so that he can get in uh, and elected in November and beat Biden? Because I guarantee you that is... This whole thing that Trump came out and said yesterday, Biden was not wanting him to say this. He, Biden was not wanting him to take this position. It would be a lot easier for Biden to, you know, bash him over the head, uh, you know, in his rhetoric if Trump had taken a hard stance on abortion. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is why, again, is Trump having to take this position uh, to sort of abandon these re hardcore Republican principles that every Republican candidate out there has to come out and say basically that they're pro-life. Um, and he's sort of ducking that and taking this um, popular sovereignty approach to 
abortion, the issue of abortion. And as I said previously, it's because we're getting our butts kicked at the polls every time that the abortion issue comes up on a ballot, like in Ohio, like in Kansas. Um, and I think the reason that we're getting our butts kicked at the polls is because we've lost the culture. We, we don't do what we need to do to participate in the culture um, to sort of enter into a social dialogue regarding this issue of abortion. Um, and that's why I've partnered with uh, Six Pence Productions. Uh, I'm an I'm a executive producer on this project, and I'm also going to be directing this TV show um, called In the Shadow of High Places. And I want to give a shameless plug here because In the Shadow of the High Places takes on the issue of abortion. It's a supernatural thriller that basically looks at abortion as an industry and it compares it with basically the theme of life and death. Um, so it's a supernatural thriller. Like I said, we have some really awesome people involved in it. Uh, we officially have Kevin Sorbo uh, attached to the project. And what we're doing right now is we're entering into our um, fundraising stage here for pre-production. And we'd like to make a 90 second trailer in order to then attract investment into the actual project. So if you are passionate about uh, the pro-life movement, if you want to see conservative filmmakers getting out there and actually taking part in uh, the art of filmmaking and storytelling, I really truly believe that storytelling is the way to reach people. You know, you look at something like Ohio where, you know, the pro-life side spent $7 million, but the, pro-abortion side spent $21 million to get that uh, right to an abortion codified in the Ohio state constitution. We're, we're spinning our wheels here. We need to reach the hearts and minds of people uh, that have been told since 1973 that a woman has a right to an abortion. And the only way that we're going to actually be able to enter into this dialogue with America is to get people talking about it and people thinking about this topic. So if you want to partner with us and help us out, we'd certainly be appreciative. We have a, a give, send, go campaign going right now, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever you feel inclined to, to give, uh, we'd certainly appreciate that. And that's what's going to be necessary going forward here for us to actually start winning in these States, because I think Trump's right here. And just from a pragmatic standpoint, we have to now battle in all 50 states. And I think storytelling is the way to do that. So we would hope that you would partner with Sixpence Productions on this very important issue. And we're going to be able to make something that's high quality and really impressive. And I think win over the hearts and minds of the people. So we appreciate your, your support. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And please, uh, you know, hit that like button, hit that follow button. Uh, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and I'm, I'm going to continue to bring you great content like this as it develops. We're in for, a, I think, a bumpy ride, but I think an exciting ride here with the next uh, election coming up in November. So I'll keep bringing you great content. Just make sure that you come back and tune into the Scott Wingeter Show and we'll see you next time. Thank you.